Are you Harley'd favor? Remember a Harley says, come out, come out. Amen. A rice burner says, me, me, me. And a moped says, but, but, but. <laughs> Glory. What a beautiful day in God's neighborhood. Amen. Turn to your neighbor, tell him this is your day. <laughs> this be your day, man. Thank you, Jesus. Again, I can only share what an awesome time to be alive. Amen. What a blessing. Why did God cho choose us to be alive at this time? Awesome. Out of all that could be alive right now, you and I are alive. And most of us should be dead anyways. You know what I'm saying? Like, hello. <laughs> but we're still alive for a purpose. To fulfill our call, purpose, and destiny. And our call is to what? Battle. Our purpose is to destroy Satan's kingdom. And our destiny is to infiltrate the world system and rescue those who've been taken. Amen? Glory to God. Would you turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4? First Thessalonians chapter 4. Glory to God. <laughs> In verse 13. And you know, everybody knows that there is an awakening going on. If you don't know, you're asleep. <laughs> it's called the trumpet sound. You know, John the Baptist was one who was blowing the trumpet. Well, he's blowing it out of his mouth. His purpose was to prepare the way. And that's what the body of Christ is supposed to be doing right now. Through the Spirit of God, we are now the voice of awakening. It's called the trumpet sound. In verse 13, let's speak it. But I do not want you to be what? Ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep. Lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep. Those are those are, are they're really not, as, I mean, they're not asleep. They're more alive than they've ever been. Amen? But they've passed from this realm, and they've crossed over to the other realm. Now, they need a glorified body. So they call them asleep because they've passed to the other side. Verse 15. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first, with the trumpet of God. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Again, this is known as the rapture. It is the fulfillment of a feast called the Feast of Trumpets. But the Feast of Trumpets will be manifested midway during tribulation. And in this, we will see that this will be known as the final trump before great tribulation. Why? Because God is trying, it's going to be the last great awakening. Does everybody understand? Believe me, when the body of Christ, when the bride, excuse me, because not everyone in the body is going home. Only the bride goes home. Those, there are still too many people playing games in the body that ain't going to make it. He's coming back for a blemish-free bride. And what's happening right now is there's a separation between the bride and the body. It's beginning to separate, just like the goat and the sheep. 
Those are on the right and those are on the left. It's amazing those who are on the left, the Lord says, you're going to hell. I wouldn't want to be a left person right now. Because they vote and promote for the things that open the door to hell. And they have no understanding because they've been taken captive. So in this, we see that this will be the final trump. It will be the greatest, it will be the last awakening before we are removed. And hopeful people that will turn, repent, and make it home. They will have to go through the great tribulation. They can store all they want and do whatever they got to do, but they'll have to make it for three and a half years. But the bride will be home celebrating and preparation for the return with the Lord to fulfill. It's called the Day of Atonement. Now, it's no coincidence that the Day of Atonement is on September 28th. Hallelujah. That's the 90th day for this, this year, 2020. Remember, since July 1st, all the way, the Lord said, 90 days, I'm bringing my body through the fire. And during this 90 day of fire and trial, he's going to begin to separate. I'll tell you, I've never been persecuted and attacked in my life. I've never seen so many things happen to me in the last 90 days out of, I don't know how many years I've been walking with the Lord. Long enough, though. About 26, 27 years, something like that. It's been crazy. But again, it's, if he's shaking the body, he's shaking the earth, isn't he? Amen? Because judgment first comes in the house of God before it goes to the world. But we know God is doing a tremendous shaking globally. It's called awakening. Amen? Because it is the voice of awakening, but it is the sound of the trumpet. Everybody okay? Go to Ezekiel 33. It is the trumpet sound. It's going on. It's happening. Not everyone's hearing it, though. In verse 1 in Ezekiel 33. Let's speak it together, please. Again, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, speak to the children of your people and say to them, When I bring the sword upon the land, is the sword on the land right now? You betcha. And the people of the land take a man from their territory and make them their watchmen. When he sees the sword coming upon the land, if he blows the trumpet and warns the people, then whoever hears the sound of the trumpet and does not take warning... If the sword comes and takes him away, his blood shall be on his own head. This is where it's so important. See, the enemy has succeeded in preventing fellowship, gathering. He has succeeded in that. And too many places are submitting to that rule of authority when it's not under the rule of authority of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He said, forsake not to assemble. Amen. And that's why people are not hearing what they're supposed to be hearing. But why can't they hear? Because without God's presence, without getting into God's presence in that worship, you can't hear. You become dull. Everybody okay? Verse 5. He heard the sound of the trumpet, but did not take warning. His blood should be upon himself. But he who takes warning shall save his life. But if the watchman sees the sword coming and does not blow the trumpet, and the people are not warned, and the sword comes and takes away any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at the watchman's hand. So you, son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Therefore you shall hear a word from my mouth and warn them from me. When I say to the wicked, O oh, you wicked man, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked from his way. That wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. Nevertheless, if you warn the wicked to turn from his way 
and he does not turn from his way. He shall die in his iniquity, but you have delivered your soul. That trumpet is the sound. It is a voice of awakening. It is a voice of warning. See, there are many attributes of blowing the trumpet or shofar. One of them is warning. The area of warning means awakening. Warning is what? Awakening. There's another trumpet that's blown and it's called for battle. It's a preparation of battle. Another trumpet that's blown is called for gathering. There will be three trumpets, three sounds of the trumpet before the seven trumpets. And the seven trumpets will follow after the three trumpets are sounded. We are in the second trumpet. Is everybody okay? Again, the first one is awakening and warning. The second one is battle. And how is battle established? It's battle by God's releasing his provision and his releasing his, strat releasing his strategies. This is called the second world one also. I want you to see the parallels of all of these. And then the third world one will come and take the bride off the earth, which is also known as the third trumpet. And the final trumpet before the seven trumpets of judgment. Is everybody okay? Matthew 24. Hallelujah. In verse 29. Glory. Is everybody okay? Anybody okay? Okay. Verse 29, let's speak it. Immediately after tribulation, I want you to see that it didn't say great tribulation. It said tribulation. Amen. Immediately after tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven and the powers of heaven will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven and then all tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of, the, of heaven with the power and great glory. And he will send out his angels with a great sound of a what? Trumpet. And they will gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Does everybody see that? Okay. So we know that that is where that's three and a half years have ended. The rapture comes. And then great tribulation comes. Amen. Why? Because it is the last trumpet of awakening before the great tribulation comes. Does everybody understand? Praise God. And Revelation 3. The sounding of the trumpet, it's going on. <laughs> Revelation 3. And when the Spirit was speaking to me this morning, it was like, do you hear the trumpet? I said, I need more understanding. I mean, I know, you know, I know what the trumpet sound is. He says, it's all over now. He said, that's what the awakening is. It's the sound. It's the sound of my cry. It's the sound from my body. It's the sound that I'm releasing from my spirit. It is the sound. It is the voice of awakening. But it is the sound of the trumpet. And many people hear it, but are refusing it. In Revelation 3, verse 1. And to the angel of the church in Sardius write, These things says he who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. If he has the seven spirits of God, does he have the seven trumpets? Yeah. I know your works, that you have a name, that you are alive, but you are dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found your works perfect before God. 
Remember, therefore, how you have received and heard. Hold fast and do what? Repent. Therefore, if you will not watch, I will come upon you as a thief in the night. And you will not know what hour I will come upon you. You have a few names, even in Sardius, who have not defiled their garments. And they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He who overcomes shall be clothed with white garments. And I will not blot out his name from the book of life. But I will confess his name before my father and his angel. He who has an ear... Let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He says, be watchful, be repentive, hold fast. Against what? There's three things that are happening right now that are being released by the enemy, and it's constant because it is, it is a battle between the voice of the stranger, amen, and the voice of truth. And so in this, you've got, there's a voice that's called deception, it's deception. There's deception, delusion, and confusion that is causing big chaos right now. It is chaos all over the world. Deception is a voice. Delusion is what people see. And confusion brings con carnal mind. Confusion of the mind. Confusion of the thoughts. Man, you talk to a lot of people all over the place and they say, man, I'm confused. I don't understand. Well, if you know they're in a place of confusion, you know their sight, their perception, they're in a place of delusion because they can't see correctly. And if you know that's happening because it originated from deception, the voice of deception. So we are battling right now in an area of deception, delusion, and confusion, which is the voice, sight, and mind. Hmm. We are fighting voices of the enemy. It is the voices of deception, delusion, and confusion that are plaguing many people. How about fear? Well, that's a voice of, voice of deception, isn't it? Amen. And Isaiah 40. So there's a battle against voices, isn't there? That's why we have a saying, who told you that? Who told you that and where did it come from? Isaiah 40. Now the word tells us in Peter that we're to be alert, we're to be consistent. Amen? Because the voice of the stranger, the voice of the enemy, the devil seeks whom he can what? Devour. And Isaiah 40 and verse 1. Everybody there? Let's speak it. Oh, hallelujah. Comfort, yes, comfort my people, says your God. Speak comfort to Jerusalem and cry out to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned. For she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted and every mountain and hill brought low. The crooked places shall be made straight and the rough places smooth. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. And when was this going to occur? And the rapture. The Lord will appear in heaven. Men will see it. The next thing, all of their friends that were believers and they weren't are going to disappear. They're going to be gone. And they can leave their jewelry behind and everything. It don't matter. I'm leaving my sneakers behind. They can have them. I might be able to see them from heaven. Look at that. Where are my sneakers? Hallelujah. Let's go a little further. Verse 6. The voice said, cry out. And he said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all its loveliness is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. 
because the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God stands for forever. Again, this is the voice of awakening. It's a trumpet that's preparing the way of the Lord. What's he trying to do? Turning hearts to repent. That's what's happening right now. Again, repentance. There's no coincidence that September 28th is the Day of Atonement because it is, it is the most holy day to the Jewish people. Matthew 13. You know, right now the enemy's trying to suck us into all kinds of deception, delusion, and confusion. He's trying to suck us into battles we don't belong into. He's trying to suck us into places we don't belong. Trying to suck us into places of agreement that we should be disagreeing with. And he's trying to bring us, suck us into a place of fear, anxiety, and stress. James, uh, what did I say? Matthew 13, I'm sorry. And verse 14, 13, 14. Let's speak it together. And in them the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, which says, Hearing you will hear and shall not understand. And seeing you will see and not what? Perceive. For the hearts of these people have what? Grown, grown what? Dull. Their ears are hard of hearing. Their eyes they have closed. Lust, they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears. Lest they should understand with their hearts and turn so that I should what? So that I should heal them, deliver them. But blessed are our eyes for they see and our, ear, our ears for we hear. These are dull of sight, dull of hearing. Dull of heart, hardness, by deception, delusion, and confusion. But the sword of awakening is going through the world. It is the voice of awakening. Why? Because usually when chaos comes, people awaken. So we're going to see more storms. We're going to see more things happen. Again, everything is being prepared right now for something tremendous that's going to happen. Something tremendous is going to happen. We don't know what it is. We can't even explain it, but we know it. We know it. That's what God is preparing the whole bride for. Something tremendous is going to happen. And we must be prepared because it is going to be a huge storm of attack. It's going to be a huge storm of attack. But we must be steadfast, prayed up, filled up, armed up, and ready to battle no matter what. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Self can't be involved. Self, if it's in the way, you're in trouble. Glory to God. Okay, let's go to uh, James chapter 3. Ready to enter a whole new world. Th you know, people still are thinking... Uh, things that are going to, they're going to be returned back to normal. I'm going to tell you right now, it's never going to return back to normal. Normality is history. <laughs> We're not normal. So praise God, it should be fine for us. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, you ain't normal. <laughs> You'll fit right in. <laughs> Hallelujah. Welcome to the house of, never mind, <laughs> house of death. Let's keep it that way. <laughs> Glory. In verse 13, James 3, 13. Who is wise and understanding among you, let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. Now, what does wisdom do? Tells you what? What to do? What does understanding do? Tells you how to do it. Hallelujah. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, it's going to bring what? Deception, delusion, and confusion. Hallelujah. 
Do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Yes. This is the voice of the stranger, again, against the voice of awakening. And he's going to utilize deception, delusion, and confusion to bring people into a chaotic state of fear, anxiety, and stress. Why? Because if he can get people into that state, they can't hear. He knows that they cannot hear the voice of God. Why? Because flesh is now above them. It's overtaking them. That emotional state of being is now speaking louder than the Spirit of God in the heart. Revelation chapter 8. Hallelujah. In verse 6, Revelation 6, everybody there? Let's speak it. So the seven angels who had seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. The first angel sounded, and hail and fire followed, mingled with blood. And they were thrown to the earth, and a third of the trees were burned up, and all green grass was burned up. Now, this is after the three trumpets. Does everybody understand it? Now, these are the seven tr trumpets of judgment, book of Revelation. In verse 9, uh, verse 8, I think, yeah. And the second angel sounded, and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea, and a third of the sea became blood. And a third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. Then the third angel sounded, and a great star fell from heaven, burning like a torch, and it fell on a third of the rivers and on its springs of water. The name of the star is called Wormwood. Some people call it Planet X. And other names. The name of the star is Wormwood. A third of the waters became wor Wormwood. In other words, contaminated. And many men died from the water. Because it was made what? Bitter. Then the fourth angel sounded. And a third of the sun was struck. A third of the moon. And a third of the stars. So that a third of them were darkened. And a, th a third of the day did not shine and likeness the night. And I looked and I heard an angel flying through the midst of the heaven saying with a loud voice, woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth because the remaining blast of the trumpet of the three angels who are about to sound. Well, remember, there was three trumpets beforehand. Now he's talking about the three ending trumpets. Is everybody okay? Glory. Chapter 9, verse 1. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star falling, falling from heaven to the earth. To him was given the key of the bottomless pit. Now, we know that this is an angel. And he opened the bottomless pit, and smoke arose out of the pit like the smoke of great furnace. So the sun and the air were darkened. Because of the smoke of the pit. I don't think they're going to be able to wear a mask then. It won't do any good. Hallelujah. Or maybe they're trying to prepare for it and they don't know it. But <laughs> then out of the smoke, locusts came up on the earth. And to them was given power as the scorpions of the earth had have power. They were commanded not to harm the grass of the earth or any green thing or any tree, but only those men who did not have the seal of God on their foreheads. In other words, they didn't repent. Amen? Remember, after the rapture, there's going to be a lot of salvation. 
Lord, forgive me. And they'll be sealed. Verse 5. And they were not given authority to kill them, but to torment them for five months. <laughs> nice. Their torment will, was like a torment of a scorpion when it strikes man. In those days, men will seek death and will not find it. They will desire to die, and death will flee from them. So God will not allow them to die. The shape of the locusts was like horses prepared for battle. On their heads were crowns of something like gold, and their faces were like the faces of men. They had hair like women's hair, and their teeth were like lion's teeth. They had breastplates like breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was like the sound of chariots with many horses running into battle. Sounds like a jet to me. Just saying. They had tails like scorpions, and there were stings in their tails. Their power was to hurt men five months. Could be chemical warfare, you know. And they had a, as king over them the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, Abaddon. But in Greek, his name is Apollyon. One woe is past, behold, still two more woes are coming after these things. Hallelujah. Verse 13. Then the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, Release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. So the four angels who had been prepared for the hour and day and month and year were released to kill a third of mankind. Anybody want to be around during this time? You have to be an idiot if you did. Verse 16, now the number of the army of the horsemen was 200 million, and I heard the number of them. And thus I saw the horses in the vision. Those who sat on them had breastplates of fiery red, ooh, and blue and sulfur yellow and heads of horns were like the heads of lions. And out of their mouth came fire, smoke, and brimstone. By these three plagues, a third of mankind was killed by the fire of the smoke and brimstone which came out of their mouth. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails. For their tails are like serpents having heads, and with them they do harm. But the rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues did not repent of the works of their hands, that they should not worship demons and idols of gold and silver, brass, stone, and wood, which can neither see nor hear nor walk. And they did not repent of their murders, of their sexual sorceries, of their sexual immorality, <laughs> or their thefts. Wow. Again, these are the trumpets of judgment. But they're the trumpets in the book of Revelation to where these are final trumpets. These are the final signs. These are the final sound of God who's releasing to the earth. But, you know, he's already warning everyone. He doesn't do something without warning people. Amen? He wouldn't just come and do something without... How many times have every one of us warned? Multiple times. I mean, come on, we had trucks pass in front of us that had signs on them. Stop what you're doing, you know? As a final seven trumpets that will bring tremendous chaos to this earth. Ephesians 5. In verse 1. We are hearing the trumpet sound. That's why he says, come out from among them and be separate. Amen. Amen. And don't touch what is unclean. In verse 1, therefore be imitators of God as dear children and walk in love. As Christ also has loved us and given himself for us. An offering and sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as is fitting for saints. Neither filthiness nor foolishness, talk, uh, foolish talking or coarse jesting which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. 
For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore do not be partakers with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, gentleness, and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord and have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather what? Expose it. If you don't expose it, it will overtake you. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore he says, awake, you who sleep. Arise from the dead and Christ will give you light. See then he works circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are what? They're evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Awake those who sleep. And again, that's what God's trying to do right now. That's, now, there's no coincidence that he put a, a man in office named Trump. Amen? And his vice president is called Pence. Trump Pence, amen? I mean, there's no coincidence in these things. Why? Because God is using this man as a voice to awaken people. But it's amazing how many people still aren't awake. And they're deceived, thinking everything's going to just be hunky-dory, that they're going to get their way. And all these governors and mayors and so forth that are allowing this destruction of people's businesses in all of these states, there's blood on their hands. I want to stand there when they get before the Lord. I want to know what's going to shake. Actually, I want to see them shake. But my hope is they get saved beforehand. Amen? That's why I pray that they get in the prison, but it's called the prison of salvation. So they can't do any more harm, and hopefully they can come to their senses and get saved. But if we refuse it, shame on them. What you sow is what you reap. Amen? 1 Corinthians 2. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 9. Hallelujah. Let's speak it. But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who what? Who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except for the spirit of God. Now we've received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man, the carnal man, does not receive the things of the Spirit of Christ. For they are foolishness to him. Nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him. But we have the mind of Christ. We have the what? Mind of Christ. Again, the natural man is asleep. The carnal man is asleep. Many Christians are still asleep, and some are falling asleep. But it is time for the awakening. You know, I, I, I might have shared this before, but years ago I had a dream that I, I was sent to a college. And, man, I was walking around and running around grabbing people and shaking them so that they would awake, telling them, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. And they just wouldn't awake. Their heads were shaking and I was shaking them like crazy. But they just, some of them just wouldn't awake. In Jude, verse 14. 
Hallelujah. Why? Because they've grown dull. Their hearts, their minds, they've grown dull. Remember, the enemy's trying to dumb people down. He's doing a very good job in our education system. It's no longer education, it's indoctrination. Kids are very smart on the uh, cell phones and stuff like that. But they're being indoctrinated to use technology to come against Christ and promote false religion, doctrines of demons. In verse 14, Now Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about these men, also saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints to execute what? Judgment on all to convict all who are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have committed in an ungodly way and all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against them. Again, nobody gets away with it. <laughs> nobody gets away with it. These are grumblers, complainers, walking according to their own lusts, and they mouth great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how they told you that, in, that there would be mockers in the last time who would walk according to their own ungodly lusts. These are sensual persons who cause what? Divisions, not having the Spirit or not being in the Spirit. But you, beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy faith, praying in tongues, which is the Holy Spirit, keeping yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercies of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And on some have compassion, making a distinction, but on others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and present you faultless as a bride before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Hallelujah. And to God, our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory, majesty, dominion, power, both now and forever and ever. And go to Romans 13, and we'll close there. Glory. Trumpet sound, or the sound of the trumpet. Or well, you might even call it the voice of awakening. But everyone is hearing it. I think people are about fed up with everything right now. You know. Actually, I was somewhere yesterday, and not one person had a mask on. I thought it was phenomenal. I said, finally. <laughs> then you go, you know, you go to the next door, and everybody's masked. They're all Darth vader Romans 13, verse 8. Is everybody there? Hallelujah. I guess I better go there. Romans 13, verse 8. <laughs> oh, no one what? Anything. Except to love one another, for he who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments... You shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not covet. If there, and if there is any other commandment, are all summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does not harm, does no harm to a what? Neighbor, therefore, love is fulfillment of the law. And do this knowing the time that now is high time to what? Awake out of sleep, for now our salvation <laughs> is nearer than we first believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in a day, not in revelry or drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make, make no, 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 no provision. For the flesh to fulfill its lust. Amen. Praise God. 
Father, we give you glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for your word this morning. We ask that you seal the seed that's been imparted, that we will be a partaker, not only of the trumpet sound, but also giving of the trumpet sound and warning to help people get set free from deception, delusion, and confusion that they may hear, that they may see, and that they may follow in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.